and welcome. My name is Meeplist, they, he, she, and today's pick is Young Adult Graphic Memoir in Limbo by Deb J.J. Lee, published by First Second in 2023. So far this year, Lee has won an Ignatz Award for Promising New Talent, and In Limbo has been nominated for a Harvey Award. Content notes, parental abuse, self-harm, attempted suicide, Harry Potter passing visual, reference eye diagrams, and surgery. Deb, JJ Lee, they, them, previously worked in tech, but is now a freelance illustrator and apparently spent a couple of years in a, quote, mermaid internet cult. They are Korean American and currently live in Brooklyn, New York. What keywords came to mind? Confusion, boundaries, tradition, expectations, family, health, blue, and faded. Flipping the book over, we have the summary, which does use she, her pronouns, but since the author bio in the back of the book uses they, them pronouns, this seems like a deliberate choice. Anyway, quote, Debra Zhengzheng Li knows she's different. Ever since her family emigrated from South Korea in the United States, she's felt her otherness. For a while, her English isn't perfect. None of her teachers can pronounce her Korean name, her face, and her eyes, especially her eyes, stand out. As the pressures of high school ramp up, friendships change and end, and everything gets harder. Even home isn't a safe place. As fights with her mom escalate, Deb is caught in a limbo, with nowhere to go and her mental health plummets. But Deb is resilient. She discovers art and self-care and gradually begins to start recovering. And during a return trip to South Korea, she realizes something that changes her perspective on her family, her heritage, and herself. End quote. A fairly linear story about relationships, relationships with family, with friends, and with yourself. It's a showing rather than telling sort of book with a lot of decompressed moments spread out across the page. We aren't rushed to anything and Deb isn't afraid to take their time. This book wasn't an easy read and covers a lot of tough subjects. Some are delved into deeper than others, but again, a lot more show than tell. Initially put off by a certain lack of contrast in Lee's art style, as I read through it, I was won over pretty strongly by Deb's use of texture and their interesting but easy to read page layouts. Looking at the points of diversity, intersection, and identity that I look at, for each of my reviews, mental health and race slash culture are fairly central to this particular story, both their own and a glimpse into other people's. It's a fairly easy step that many people still don't take, but the amount of background racial diversity was pretty high. Similarly, with the mental health focus as Lee comes of age, they become more cognizant of the ways many of the people around them are also going through similar things. Binary gender nonconformity felt a bit surprisingly absent once I read more about Lee, but that certainly wasn't on my radar as a kid, so also makes some sense. And it wasn't like gender was totally stricken from the book. Similarly, their sexuality was not an overt topic of the book. Class was largely ignored. To conclude, a pretty engrossing read that ended up being a lot more than I originally thought. Four stars. Bye y'all, keep reading and stand with striking workers. And Literally Graphic is created on land that should be given back to the traditional landholders. Which in this case is, to my knowledge, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, Anamishnabe people, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron-Wendat Nation.